In this video, we will create a sample ASP.NET Web API application and consume them using different types of uh, clients. For that, first click on File, New Project. Select ASP.NET MVC4 Web Application. Put a nice name, My First Web API and say OK. And here is the ASP.NET MVC4 project dialog box. Select Web API and say OK. So here it is what we have. Web API project template includes a sample Web API called values with it. If you are an ASP.NET MVC developer, then you may find lots of features in Web API are similar to MVC. They are not exactly same, but as an ASP.NET developer, you can definitely reuse your knowledge here. But if you are not if you are not a ASP.NET develop, MVC developer, then these things are going to be new for you. But it's not going to be difficult for you. Let's look at the some common features. In MVC, we have something called as MVC controller. Whereas in Web API, we have something called as API controller. The difference between these two controllers are in API controller, action methods are actually HTTP methods like get, post, put, and delete. Uh, even we can overload these methods if required. We'll look into these methods in detail shortly. But before that, let's discuss about one more feature that is routes. Let's take a look at MVC default routes and try to understand how MVC requests work. For that, expand this app underscore start folder. We have route config.cs file here. Open it. Here it is uh, MVC default routes. When request comes to MVC, it takes the URL and parses the first three segments of the URL. And the first segment is controller. It find the class with this name then we have action and it literally find the method inside this controller with this name and we also have default or optional id parameter here just like this in web api we have default web api routes just to keep it separate from mvc routes web api routes are prefixed with the word api we can change this name to anything like invoice api customer api or maybe facebook api has per our requirement then we have controller and we have optional id parameter the beauty here is we don't have actions here the reason behind that is actions are actually http methods and depending on the type of client request for example if it's a if it's a get met, uh, get request then get method get called if it's a post request then post method get called and so on let me close this both the files and move to move to our controller what i will do is i will put a breakpoint here and execute the application okay now as per the route config i have to put api has prefix here and my controller name is values controller so values and press enter oh great breakpoint is here if i press f5 I get the XML representation of my string array. It's that simple. So let's look at the same request using Fiddler. For those who don't know what is Fiddler is, Fiddler is a web debugging tool which logs all HTTP traffic between our computer and the internet. It also let us make requests and also let us modify the HTTP address as per our convenience. Uh, you can pause the video and copy the URL and download the Fiddler uh, to your computer. Okay, let me open Fiddler. What I will do is click on this comp Composer tab and we'll make a new get request to our web API and click on the execute. Okay, we get success message. Now let's look at the output we got. When we click on the raw, what we can see here is we are getting JSON representation of our string data. If you remember, when we made the request using Chrome, we got XML representation. Whereas in case of Fiddler, we are getting, getting it as JSON. The reason behind that is we have something called as accept. Accept is a field in HTTP header. It specifies what kind of response a client can accept. Default, uh, what we say, 
default accept value for chrome is xml whereas for fiddler it is uh, json but in X, but in fiddler we can change that like this accept colon application slash xml and say execute okay we got a success now if i click on raw what i can see is i am getting a xml representation of my string variable if i click on compose and change this xml back to json and click on execute what i can see is i am again getting the json this thing this term is called as or this concept is called as content negotiation depends on the client request server is returning the format when client say i want xml it gives xml when client say json we say it gives json even we if we want we can return our own custom format like visiting card or anything or image or it may be anything depends on the client depends on our requirement we can change the accept value and client and if it is supported in the server it will return the same format uh, now let's try to create something more interesting first of all in this video we will only talk about get methods we will try to cover post put and delete methods in further coming videos so let me remove this okay and let create a small class called customer inside our model and let create two properties inside this first one is int property called customer id let make it i capital okay and let's create our second property a string property called customer name it's that simple next we will move back to our controller that is value controller and just instead of returning this string what we will do is we will say we will return customer and say import okay and here i will say customer okay fine now i will say if i equal to 1 1 then return new customer customer id equal to 1 comma customer name sukesh marla else else if i equal to equal to 2 then return oh what happened oh sorry it's id okay if i equal to equal to 2 then return new customer customer id as to comma customer name equal to new customer fine okay or else i will return null okay it's simple and again what we will do is here we will write something like this new list of customer here i will say this enter and this okay we are ready with our controller we just created two get methods inside it one returning list and second returning a single customer now let's consume this web api we will consume this web api first using google chrome second using fiddler and third we will write jquery and try to consume the same so let's start with google chrome what we will do is we'll just run this application okay okay it's there say slash api slash values okay we got it we got the xml representation of our list of customer this is because entering a url and pressing enter that means we are actually making get request to our web api let me put breakpoint here and run that run it again okay see breakpoint is getting hit here when i say continue i am getting the xml okay now let me try with an another get method 
overloaded get method okay when I put one I am getting Sukesh Marla in return let me put breakpoint there and let me try with second parameter say 2 I will press enter okay it's there say F10 okay ID is not matching now ID is matching we are getting new customer in return okay that's it we got the new customer here if I pass something else other than 1 and 2 then I am getting okay ID is not matching again ID is not matching I am getting null okay we are getting nothing that's it it's that simple we just consumed our web API using Google Chrome now we will try the same using Fiddler for that let me launch Fiddler once again Fiddler is, is here let's click on composer and let make a get request to our web API here it here is the web API and we got JSON representation of our list of customer now if we change the comp uh, except as we did earlier to application slash XML and say execute and if we check the result here it is we got the XML representation Similarly, we can make request to our another customer, another get method, and output is he is here in XML format. You can see we are Sukesh Marla is here. If we change the accept type to JSON back, then we will get the result in JSON format. So it's that simple. Uh, we can use Fiddler for the testing purpose uh, because we can test it for various formats and all now the final demonstration where we will try to consume our web API using jQuery for that we have a small web application called web API test with us with a simple button and a jQuery support here we have jQuery or JavaScript click handler for the button and our task is to write a code which will consume the web API and display the result so let's start coding in jQuery we have something called as $.ajax which we can use to consume web API it has parameters like URL URL which will accept which will take the web API URL then we have type which will tell which kind of which uh, which method we are going to invoke like get post or something else next it has data type what kind of format we are expecting in return we are expecting JSON for now next we have a callback method called success which get called when the result is written from web API it has a parameter called data now let's start with okay what we will do is we will put an alert and say data dot customer name now let's put a breakpoint in our web API here and let's run this application now you notice as soon as you click on this button we are getting breakpoint hit here if you notice the value of ID is now 1 so definitely we are going to get this customer in return when I say FI I am getting in alert Sukesh Marla which is because of this code block similarly if we try to consume a previous get method which which is which is going to return a list of customer then definitely we are supposed to make a loop on customers we can do it like this data comma it has a function called as function E comma customer then what we have to do is we have to say alert one we have customer dot customer name then 
there nothing that's it now if I press ctrl F5 here and try to click this button I'm getting Sukesh Marla and new customer as well so here we finish our simple demonstration of how to create and consume ASP.NET Web APIs hope you enjoyed if you have any query you can write to us and we will try to reply with the best possible way we can thank you